Okay, we're here with Coach Hoiberg. I'll start with questions. I'll start with Robin Washington. Hey, Fred, I wanted to ask about your front court. They uh, obviously saw limited playing time in the two games against Maryland. Was that mostly just because of matchups, or did it have to do with Derek's conditioning coming back off the break? Or um, I guess what was the reason behind that? And uh, do you anticipate them game being more involved going forward? Yeah, a big part of it was Derek's condition. And, you know, we made the decision of uh, not to take any chances and sat him in the second half of that first game. And then second game, you know, we wanted to, we're just gradually going to get him back going again. Um, and then it also had a, a lot of it had to do with how Maryland plays. They, they play smaller uh, than pretty much every team in the league. They start, uh, they did in the Minnesota game before our first game with them. They went to that smaller lineup. So that, that, had, part, that had something to do with it as well. But yeah, they're going to have to be a, a big part. All three of those guys are going to have to be ready. We're playing, I think, as good a big as any in the country tomorrow um, with uh, with Williams and then Edie off the bench. You know, they just pose so many problems. They throw it into them, uh, most possessions. And we're going to have to have all three of those guys ready to come in, just keep fresh bodies on them to try to slow them down as much as we can. Chris Bassett. Hey, Fred, what were you guys able to, you know, get done in practice today after the off day yesterday and how the guys kind of responded to finally being able to maybe get a little bit of rest? Well, I wanted to get him up and down a little bit today, Chris, but we literally had three possessions in a row where I had three guys limp off the court. And I just, after that, made the decision, let's just walk through. We were just dropping like flies. And generally, the second day after an extended trip is the one where you're more tired. And yesterday, uh, you know, you kind of go on, on adrenaline after that first day back home. And then the second day, that's when it hits you. So we did. We got him up. We got a really good sweat early in practice, uh, but when we put our scout in and the game plan in, generally when we go live and get them up and down a little bit more, we just weren't able to do that because of a couple little things. Not that any of them have to sit out tomorrow, but literally three straight plays. I had guys uh, limp off the court. So, you know, we just made the decision to put the game plan, walk through it, and we'll get an opportunity to get a sweat tomorrow uh, at, uh, at noon before the 4.30 tip and hopefully have, have our legs. That, that's going to be as important as any in this stretch that we're going to have coming up is to try to keep them as fresh as possible. Sam McEwen. Hey, Fred. Uh, we can all kind of see that Eduardo Andre as a player is developing, you know, in front of our eyes in terms of his, uh, you know, skill set and his awareness on the court. Um, what have you liked about the work that he's done maybe over the last two to three weeks? Well, I'm really proud of Eduardo, for one, for working on his game and spending a lot of extra time in the gym, working on his finishes, uh, working on his conditioning. Uh, he, we, we put him on the scout team to where he's playing. The other teams, you know, most teams in this league have, have, have a great big. So he's getting a lot of touches in that type of setting. And I think it's helped him. I think it's helped with his conditioning. You have the first team guard it, second team guard it, and you're getting every rep. And I think that has really helped Eduardo with conditioning, learning the league uh, of what bigs uh, are going to do. And then when he gets in the game, he should know because he's learning all the plays. Uh, as we put the scout in. So, you know, the thing I really like about him, Sam, is how he's running the floor. He's doing a great job getting up and down. He's setting screens. He's rolling to the rim. I think uh, our shooters have benefited because of Eduardo's commitment uh, to rolling to the basket. Uh, and then he's made some really nice passes. You know, we're, we're trying to, we've done a good job loosening teams up a little bit. Uh, with Derek flash into the high post with Eduardo, and they've made good reads and good passes off of it. So I think Eduardo's got a chance uh, with his physical tools to be special, and, and I've said that since we got him. And you know, rim protection—we haven't had that, uh, you know, in the two years uh, that we're coming up on. But Eduardo has had some really good blocks at the rim, and you know, plays that would have been two points or three on an and one uh, are now. You know, we've got that guy back there, so we can get extended a little bit more as we move on with Eduardo into the future. Uh, and he'll play more and more as we as we go down the stretch run. And I've uh, been really pleased with his development and uh, proud of how he's continued to work. I have a question, uh, one more about him. Offensively, how long does it take players generally to develop those post moves and their confidence in finishing at the rim? I think we've all seen Ivan come a ways in his journey, but he still has a ways to go. 
how does how, how do you work on that? Is it just repetition or are there other things that you guys lean on to develop their offensive skills? Yeah, it, it is repetition. There's no doubt about that. It, it's continuing to get in the gym, which those two guys, uh, both Ivan and Eduardo, do a good job. And a lot of it is where they are based on their uh, development in, in their basketball lives. And both those two guys started playing basketball later than most of the guys on our roster. Eduardo, I mean, he's still new to this game. But I think you see the feel. <clears throat> I think he's going to develop into a nice shooter. He's got a nice high release point. Uh, you saw, I think, my Penn State around one of those games, he stepped up and knocked down two free throws with no hesitation. And uh, you know, I think he's going to have a chance to be a very good shooter uh, because of his mechanics. Uh, but you know, again, as you talked about, Sam, the repetition with the players, especially the ones that, that didn't grow up with this game. You know, Eduardo grew up playing a lot of soccer. I think that's why he's got great feet. Uh, but you know he's he's got a chance to be a really good one because again of his athleticism uh, you can't teach a seven seven almost seven five wingspan uh, and then uh, you know the the way that he is coming along with his skill set. Jacob Bedia, <clears throat> Trey's been struggling a bit the last handful of games. What have you seen from him on film, and what can you do to help him pull himself out of that slump? Um, so you said Trey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Trey is, uh, you know, I think he'd probably be the first one to say right now that he is probably struggling a little bit with his confidence. And, you know, the things that you know, you, we worked this morning before practice, you know, on some things to get him closer to the line on some of his shots. He's shooting his threes, you know, four or five feet behind the line right now. He's gathering. Uh, he's had some really good takes to the basket. He just hasn't finished them. Some of that is he's gathering the ball a step or two outside of where he should. So, you know, watching some of those things, you know, Trey was probably the best player that we had going into the break. He was phenomenal. And he'd really, I think, figured out when to attack and kind of when to back off a little bit and get us into an action. Uh, you know, and then it's taken not only Trey, but all of our guys. It's going to take time as they work their way back into shape, uh, you know, after the shutdown that we had. So, you know, it's affected some of them more than it has others. But, you know, Trey. We still want him to continue to be aggressive. I thought his two threes in the first half were right on. And, you know, unfortunately, they didn't go in. So, you know, I think he was almost 45% from three point line before the shutdown happened. So, you know, it's just getting that rhythm back, having a game uh, where he sees the ball go through the hoop and, and hopefully getting some confidence back. Eric Wilson. Hey, Fred, did you uh, happen to see what uh, Jawan Howard said yesterday about not liking the idea of playing back-to-back -back nights? And if, if, if not, I just wanted to see if you have an interpretation of it where he said that uh, every program's different. We're a lot different from Nebraska and Maryland. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, did, you, did you hear that, and how do you interpret that? Well, I, I interpret it a couple different ways. Um, you know, one, and, and listen, I have the utmost respect for Jawan Howard. I always have. He's a guy that, you know, I, I know. I tried to hire him when I was in Chicago, uh, when I got when I got the, the Bulls job. And, uh, you know, I admired him as a player. Uh, you know, he's doing obviously unbelievable things at Michigan. But, you know, I said it the other night after the game, our programs are in two completely different places right now. You know, we're in a beginning stages of a rebuild and you know he's right now a guy a team that's going to compete for a championship so you know for us these games are all very meaningful for the development of our players you've seen what it's done for eduardo uh you know to get more action and more games so to me the more games we can play uh you know the better it's going to be now the one thing I don't want is for it to affect long-term health. And, you know, we talk to our training staff and our medical staff about that and try to make sure that the guys, uh, you know, make it through these last however many games we're going to play, you know, on, on what the Big Ten gives us. But it's important for us uh, to get games where our guys can continue to develop and get opportunity. Uh, you know, the other thing, you know, I, I, I can't say I blame what they're trying to do over there, you know? And the last thing I'd say is, you know, for me, you know, I'm gonna talk about what's best for our program. And, you know, I, I would hope all the other coaches would do the same thing. Thank you. Tom Chattel. Hey, Fred, I want, I, I, I want to ask you about fans. Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's been a crazy year, obviously. What's it been like in a lot of these arenas that are just empty and um, do you, how much do you, do you miss the fans this year? 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously our league is, has the best fan bases in the country. And, you know, to, to play in an empty arena, I mean, a big part of playing at Nebraska is the great fan support that you have. And you see it all across the board in every sport. You know, our arenas are full, our stadiums are full, uh, you know, and it's, a, it's an unbelievable atmosphere, you know, especially as, you know, hopefully we get it going in the next couple years, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, electric uh, in, our, in our arena. And hopefully we get back to that. Hopefully next year's normal. Hopefully this vaccine, uh, you know, does great things and, and gets the fans back in the seats at full capacity. Uh, you know, I guess the NCAA passed today that they're going to allow, what is it, 20 or 25 percent uh, capacity at the, at the NCAA tournament. So, you know, going into next year, you know, hopefully we can get this thing behind us and get some normalcy back in our lives where we have full stadiums and arenas again. Uh, that's a huge part of college athletics. It's a huge part in sports in general is playing in front of great fan bases. And, you know, sometimes guys, even on the road, you get motivated with, you know, the fans in the building. I loved playing on the road when, when I was high school, college, whatever it was. Uh, you know, you can use all that stuff as motivation. So it's been, it's been tough, Tom, but, you know, it's the same for everybody. It's not like somebody has an advantage more than somebody else uh, because there's no fans. I get, you know, there's a couple of conferences that are allowing a little bit, you know, 1,200 or 1,500, you know, 2,000, whatever it is. But the Big Ten has made the decision uh, to not allow anybody in the building besides families. And some uh, schools don't even allow that. Uh, it's, it's obviously it's not ideal, but you know, with with what we're living in and trying to get through right now, uh, you know, it's the thing that makes the most sense. And then, like I said, hopefully next year we get back to normal, get back to some normalcy. Connor Harper, Coach, I'm curious uh, about your kind of approach over the last um, stretch of the season here. Do you have, do you have a, a a set, you know? goals or things you want to accomplish before the season ends or is it is it more of like just a game to, it's coming so fast that it's a game to game thing and you're just trying to find wins wherever you can well I, you know the biggest thing is we're just trying to take it day by day right now and that's what you have to do when you have as crazy a stretch as we've had and you know you, you play the seven games in 12 days in five states and as I said when you have that type of stretch where you're traveling that much you know the first day you feel okay and today you know I thought our guys were, were pretty pretty wiped out uh, you know part of this conditioning and training to get our guys ready is to make sure they're as fresh as they possibly can be so they can play uh, to the best of their abilities you're not going to be able to play and I thought you saw that in the Maryland game uh, we were as poor defensively as we've been in a long time and I think a lot of that had to do with just the mental fatigue that we had uh, with the stretch that we were finishing up and we weren't talking like we had been uh, you know we, we got lost on several occasions two guys went with the same guy they were getting all kinds of looks and you know to me the way we had been defending that had a lot to do with the fatigue element so you know it's about getting hopefully back mentally sharp uh, and physically where you have the legs to play you know complete game we're playing a hell of a team tomorrow in Purdue and every game the rest of the way in this league uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, very difficult. So, you know, we're going to try to do everything we can to get our players ready. The other thing is development, uh, you know, playing some more of the guys that maybe haven't gotten a great opportunity to this point, uh, you know, to hopefully see what we have going into next year. You know, that's going to be an important part of our future. I feel great about our future with our recruiting class, uh, you know, with some of the players, uh, you know, that, that certainly will be back, uh, you know, going into next year, you know, with Bryce, uh, Bryce McGowan's, uh, with Wilhelm Breidenbach and with Keisha. I think we got three players that can absolutely help us. And then you got some continuity, which we have not had uh, to this point. So, you know, with the continuity of the players that have been in it, you know, you can see we're getting a little more comfortable with it as the season goes on. Uh, you know, and hopefully that'll pay some benefits. But, you know, some of the other players that maybe haven't played as much. I got Trevor some, you know, solid minutes the other night, and he's going to, uh, you know, be in a position where we're going to play him, um, you know, to see. Uh, you know, see if he can give us what we thought he could when he, we brought him in as far as his shooting. And he shot a great in practice today. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue to hopefully get guys opportunities, but development is a big part of what we're trying to accomplish with the rest of the season. We'll finish with Jacob Padilla. Purdue's got a good mix of veterans and uh, young guys in the rotation. What kind of challenges do you think they'll present to you guys? Yeah, it just, they're, 
they do a great job. You see the pace that they run their actions with is as good as any in the country. And, you know, Matt Painter, I think, does a phenomenal job with his team and the actions that he runs, uh, not only to get his bigs uh, touches on the blocks, but also the actions that he runs for his shooters uh, coming off screens. You know, that, uh, Travion Williams, not only can he score it, but, you know, the 28 that he scored against Michigan State, he did it in such a variety of ways, his moves, uh, you know, the 15-foot jump hooks off the window from the left side of the floor, his ability to pass. He's, you know, one of the best big passers, that, you know, I've seen. So, you know, it starts with him, and then you bring in a 7-4 player in Edie uh, that they're going to throw it to pretty much every possession he's in the game and then play off of him with their shooting. So, you know, they just put you in a tough position because their bigs are so skilled on the block, uh, and then they've got guys that can knock down shots around them. Okay, that'll end our session with Coach Hoiberg. We'll come back with Kobe Webster shortly. Thank you.